And the job of a master is to give you tools and methods with which you can see and experience and feel and know it yourself. I'm not saying that you believe that you are the pure Atman, the real true self, and not this body-mind intellect constituent. I'm not saying just believe it. I'm saying explore it. So what I gave you this morning was a small tool of exploration. And you see, if you just, you are what I would say three days old in this ashram, right? Claire? Just three days. And in three days, and that one small conversation which we had by the Saptarishi Hall this morning, and then followed by a little more in the garden. And you did the experiment which I told you to do. And you with all gleam in your eyes are saying, I got a glimpse. Now I know what you are saying. It's a glimpse, but now I know it. So the, the thing is, the exploration has to be done by you, not by me. But the best what I can do is I can be the guide, the navigator, who gives you the pointers to look there, to look here, to take the left turn, to take the right turn, or to walk, or to stop, you know. And that's what the job of a guru is, and that's what the job of a disciple is. That you believe the master's word, and you learn, and you experiment, and then you come to the conclusion. So Guru is not the one who lectures, and the disciple is not the one who listens. Guru is the one who works in partnership with the disciple, and makes the disciple able and eligible enough to do these things, and experiment these things, and know the truth by their experience, not by my word, not by word of a scripture, right? And mind you, all scriptures are written by some human beings, some great human beings maybe. And, but the final result is going to come when you do this exploration, that is encountering the truth directly. Not just believing in words. If you just believe a, a word, then you are like a sheep. But you are not supposed to be a sheep. You are sp supposed to be a thinking, logical person. So I bet you that if you just use the pointers and use it to navigate, you will come to this point where you know who you are. Not by word, but by experience. Not because Gita is saying, not because Upanishad is saying, not because Vedanta philosophy is saying, but because you experience that. But sure, it is not something that will happen in a jiffy. Requires dedication, requires very sharp intelligence, very sharp observation and very in-depth abilities and sensitivities to experience this. And we are not talking about something different or foreign, it's about you. So I can say, uh, you have lost your own identity and spirituality is all about seeking that, what you are. It might seem little paradoxical that I have lost myself and I have to find myself. But this is what you are supposed to do. So what, whatever comes on the way, it might seem odd to the mind. Because the mind has always seen body as me, feelings as me, experiences as me, thoughts as me. And now suddenly there is something else which is coming up on the surface. So the mind will get... Wow, what is that? So that sense of amazement, that sense of 
actually when this will get little deeper it will bring the true wow moment to you the true wow moment wow what is that and it's just like all the pains and the miseries of the life just poof gone in a second it's a very liberating experience it will be unbelievable experience but surely it is something which just transforms you i always say this that wait for that glimpse which might happen and it's the grace of should i say god or should i say guru or should i say that particular moment that gives you this openness and suddenly everything is so clear right clear <laughs>